and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. San Vigil PD presents the Sports Corner Podcast. Let's get ready to rumble! Hey guys, what's up here? It's um, Too Sweet Podcast, and today I'm going to be talking about um, MMA or Mixed Martial Arts slash Boxing. Um, unfortunately, Lee couldn't be here today, so um, I'm taking over, and the WWE Podcast will be on hold until two weeks. So, I want to talk about the UFC, I want to talk about UFC news, I want to talk about predictions, my favourite fighters, and I'm going to talk about Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. That is going to be the biggest subject um, of the week, of the podcast. So, I want to talk about UFC 223 predictions. This is a very, very, very stacked card. Like, crazy, crazy stacked card. Um, amazing fighters. And you can't forget, like, there's Rose Nunez versus Ioana Ioan Jacek. And there's also Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Tony Ferguson. But I also want to say, there is Anthony Pettis. Um, I think Anthony Pettis versus... Anyway, Anthony Pettis on the card. I'll let you know the card in a moment. But I'm going to talk about my um, predictions. So, should I start with the main event? Or... Nah, you know what? I'm going to start with the... Uh, I'm going to start off with the uh, first fight apparently which will be on the night um so let me get this up here but also i also want to talk about habib never get met off i think habib's gonna stay undefeated i think habib's actually gonna mole um absolutely gonna mole um what's his name tony ferguson so the first fight is i think um, it's either Carolina Kowavich, Kowavich versus Felice Harris. So, um, you know what? We'll start off with that. I think this is a no. This is no brainer. I think Carolina Ko, um, Kowavich or whatever her name is is absolutely gonna romp Felice Harris. I think um, her Muay Thai background, her undefeated Muay Thai background, is. Phenomenal. She's beaten the likes of I think she's beaten no, that was um Shevchenko. Shevchenko has beaten um Yoana Yoan Jacek. But Carolina Kovic is amazing at stand up. I don't think Felice Harris will even stand uh, last two rounds of her. I think she's gonna get demolished. But she probably will last um everything because um I reckon Kovic is gonna just um torture her throughout the whole three rounds. So um I think Colvage by decision. That's what I predict um, as well. I just think that, you know, she's a former contender. She did pretty well against Joanna Yuan Jacek. Like, it was a good fight. But I don't see Felice Harridge winning at all. Now I'm going to go to the main card because uh, that wasn't the main card. I'm going to talk about Ala Quinta versus Paul Fielder. I think... Um, Alda Quint is going to win, first of all, I love, he's just a balanced, he's a very balanced mixed martial artist, um, he's really good on feet, he's alright on ground, he has good wrestling, um, Paul Fielder, I think he has um, really good submissions, I don't see him really, um, uh, what's it called, outstriking Alda Quinta. I think Alda Quinta is really good. He's just a very balanced fighter. I think Ala Quinta wins by decision. That's what I'm going to give um, Ala Quinta. Now, I want to talk about Michael Chiesa, or Chessa, whatever you want to call him, or Anthony Pettis. Now, this is a really good fight. This is a very underrated fight. I think Anthony Pettis, um, when he debuted in UFC in lightweight, he absolutely demolished the whole lightweight division. Anthony Pettis, he's no joke. He's absolutely no joke. I know he's lost a lot of his last fights. He lost against Dustin Poirier. But I saw that old Anthony Pettis back in that Dustin Poirier fight. I think 
Anthony Pettis will actually demolish Marco Chiesa, and I'll tell you why. Marco Chiesa is a very good wrestler. His striking's all right. He has good knockout power, I guess. But Anthony Pettis knows how to keep it on the feet. He's really he has good takedown defense, and his striking is out of this world. I think if Anthony Pettis can win this fight, it will it will um. Get him back on track. Uh, obviously, it's going to get him back on track. I think he needs a three or four fight winning streak to really, really be a threat in the lightweight division. Right now, the lightweight division is the second, in my opinion, most stacked division. Maybe even the first. I think the welterweight division is really stacked with Darren Till, Kobe Covington. You have Tyrone Woodley. You have Stephen Thompson. You have all these fighters. You have Kamara uh, Usman. Usman is a beast man he would oh he would he's like habib he reminds me of the nigerian habib habib's rumored to go up to that weight class after he beats in my opinion tony ferguson but we'll see we'll see so i think anthony pettis wins by knockout in the third round i think michael tiesa and anthony pettis is gonna be a close fight but i reckon anthony pettis is just gonna edge it out and he's gonna beat um Michael Chiesa. Michael Chiesa is a very good wrestler. So if Michael Chiesa can put it on the ground, that would be good. But Anthony Pettis has good jiu-jitsu. I don't know about Michael Chiesa. I haven't seen his fights. I heard he did get choked out by um, Kevin Lee. So that kind of does say something. Even though Mario, he didn't tap. He was gonna. He was gonna go out. It was easy. Mario Yamasaki made the worst decision, but it's all right. He was gonna lose that match anyway, or that fight anyway. It's not a match fight. The next fight, well, these fighters, I don't know. I'm not really familiar with these fighters. But it's um, Renanto Moncano versus Calvin Cater. I don't really know these fighters. I'm going to tell you that right now. But I've heard a lot about Calvin Cater. Calvin Cater, he can, like, legit... He's really good everywhere. He can torture the his opponent throughout all three rounds if it's five he has to obviously i think he wins by decision and the reason why for that is i think he's just a better fighter in general he has better stand-up he probably has better jiu-jitsu and he probably has probably has better wrestling i see i can see um moreno going for a decision or maybe a knockout, but I highly, highly doubt it. So I think Calvin Cater for decision. Now, to the co-main event of the evening, which... <laughs> Rose Darman Nunes versus Joanna Yohan Jacek. I don't know why the hell Yo- Rose Darman Nunes is so... He's, she's overhyped. She got a lucky shot, in my opinion. I think Joanna Yohan Jacek was not in the right headspace. And... You know, people are saying she's not in the right headspace now, but I totally, I totally disagree. I don't know if she's going to do it by decision, but I think she's going to do it by knockout. Everyone's saying Rose Nama Nunes is going to beat her by submission. I doubt it. I don't think Rose Nama Nunes is going to survive. Out. Like, she will probably win round one and two, but I don't think she's going to win round three, four, and five. I don't think Rose Nama Nunes is experienced enough for the for the five rounds, but that's my opinion, I just, man, you want to, you want Jay Tech, her Muay Thai, her Muay Thai is absolutely phenomenal, she has good, she has good groundwork, she has amazing takedown defense, one of the best, probably the best in the strawweight division, by far, um, you saw what she did against Jessica Andrade, uh, Jessica Andrade has been mauling everyone ever since her loss against Joanna Yuan Jacek. You saw what she did to Claudia Gadella and um, uh, what's her name? Tisha Torres. Tisha Torres is a pretty good fighter. She's really good on uh, on the ground. And Joanna Yuan Jacek absolutely smashed um, Jessica Andrade. Uh, I think Rose Nama Nunes is overhyped. Rose Nama Nunes has, had, has lost against a lot of, like... I think she's only lost three, four times, which is seven and three, seven and four, something like that. I just don't see Rose Darman Nunes winning. I think she's overhyped. I think Joanna wins by decision, and if she does win by knockout, it's the third or fourth round. Now, to the main event of the evening. 
the main event of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Khabib Namagomedov versus Tony Ferguson. <laughs> um, I don't see Tony Ferguson winning at all. I'll tell you why. I don't care if he has a black Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt under Eddie Bravo. I don't care if he has a um amazing cardio. I just see Khabib absolutely demolishing him. Um, if Habib can get on weight healthy, and if he was in the shape that he was in against Edson Barbosa, I don't see anyone but Conor McGregor, and maybe, maybe, just maybe Kevin Lee, I doubt it, I doubt it though, um, stop, stop, um, stop, uh, what's his name, Habib Nurmagomedov, Habib Nurmagomedov mauls people, absolutely mauls them, Habib, He's the best um, fighter, in my opinion, of all time. He's the greatest. Now, I like Tony Ferguson, El Kukui, but he got mounted by Kevin Lee. He got mounted by Kevin Lee once or twice. He's been on the ground against Kevin Lee. He did win that fight by a triangle, but he was getting demolished most of that fight. If everyone remembers, he got mounted. Let's just say that. Tell me. How is he going to survive against Habib when he gets mounted? He won't survive. I don't care how good he is on the bottom. Habib just won't let that happen. Habib is too good. Even if he gets um, tied up in a choke, Habib has the ability to go out. Um, because to me, Kevin Lee, to me, is one-dimensional. Yeah, he's a one-dimensional fighter to me. Kevin Lee doesn't have the best stand-up. He has good wrestling, and he has okay jiu-jitsu. That's what I see in Kevin Lee, but... Kevin Lee can get that jiu-jitsu up, he's going to be a beast. Just like Brian Ortega, man. Brian Ortega's jiu-jitsu is absolutely amazing. And Brian Ortega uh, stand-up is crazy. But let me go back to this fight. So I think Tony Ferguson, if he does win, which he probably won't. By the way, this is for the real belt. Um, Connor, sorry, but you don't defend your belt at all. So um, Connor McGregor... No, sorry, Tony Ferguson... If he does win this, I reckon it's by submission in the fourth round. Or knockout. Actually, knockout, I reckon. Because Khabib, let's say, he has a bad weight cut. He does make weight, but he's, he's exhausted. I see Tony Ferguson winning. But if Khabib has a good weight cut, he's going to maul him. I just think Khabib, he's either going to go win by decision or he's going to win by ground and pound in the third round or the fourth round. I don't see him getting out, getting out of the, uh, getting out of the, uh, fourth or fifth round if Habib decides to. Habib could have finished Edson Barbosa, but he wanted to maul him, you know. If he really wants to maul Tony Ferguson, he will maul Tony Ferguson, and he will become one of the greatest. 26 and 0. He's going to defend his title, go up to Walter Way, hopefully, versus Tyron Woodley, and I think. Him and Tyron Woodley, that's that's um, Khabib's best chance of the biggest challenge, I reckon. Everyone's saying Tony Ferguson's his biggest challenge. To me, his biggest challenge was Edson Barbosa and Rafael de Sanos. Rafael de Sanos has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt as well, same as Tony Ferguson. Yes, Tony Ferguson defeated Rafael de Sanos. Yes, he also defeated Edson Barbosa, but Edson Barbosa was winning uh, most of that fight until Tony Ferguson came back. I don't see Tony Ferguson coming back against Khabib at all. I don't see that at all. I really do think... I really think that Khabib Nurmagomedov is actually just going to mole this this guy, man. I think he's going to turn him into a little boy. I think he's just going to just gonna kill him. He's going to absolutely romp him. Um, and... As well, like Rafael de Sanos got romped by Khabib Nurmagomedov. Rafael de Sanos is a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, same as Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson defeated Edson Barbosa, same as Khabib. Tony Ferguson defeated um, uh, Rafael de Sanos, same as Khabib. Khabib did it in 10 times better fashion. And Tony Ferguson has not defeated Michael Johnson. He lost against Michael Johnson. Khabib beat Michael Johnson. I think that says something. I think Habib is just going to mole him, but we'll see. You know, I said that about Kevin Lee. I thought Kevin Lee was going to beat um, Tony Ferguson. I was right. 
no, no, I wasn't right, but during the fight, I was like right. You know, he was winning the fight, but you know, he got a lucky triangle choke. Not a lucky, but he got a triangle choke, and he choked out Kevin Lee. Now I want to talk about um, my pre- not really prediction, but yeah, it is a prediction when Brian T. City Ortega versus Max West Holloway. I don't see Brian Ortega winning. Now I'll tell you why. Yes, he's one of my favorites, Brian Ortega. I've been on Brian Ortega's hype train um, s- before Cup Swanson's win, I th- and two more fights before Cup, Cup Swanson uh, when he beat Cup Swanson. By the way, that guillotine choke was absolutely amazing. But Brian Ortega, I'll say this: he's a good fighter, but I don't see him beating Max Blessed Holloway. I think. It's going to be the blessed era. I think the top three fighters will be TJ Dillashaw, it will be Khabib Nurmagomedov, and it will be Max Holloway. I think Max Holloway is going to be number one pound for pound for a very long time until Conor McGregor steps in and dethrones him. If he does, I don't know if he's going to dethrone him. You know, Conor McGregor is just he's amazing, but he needs to work on his wrestling. He needs to work on his jiu-jitsu. He shouldn't be a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I know a lot of brown belts, like personally, who would probably defeat Connor in Jiu Jitsu. But I haven't seen Connor we haven't seen Connor uh, grapple properly. Unless it was Chad Mendes and he did win that fight but he got destroyed on the on the ground. Um so I think Max Holloway if he did win it would be by um knockout in the third, fourth round. And if Brian Ortega won it would be by a triangle choke in my opinion. Um I don't know third Round, I don't know. Max Holloway has an amazing gas tank. I don't know about Brian Ortega. I just don't see Brian Ortega winning. Like, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know. Like, it's not a John Jones, Daniel Cormier situation. Kind of, it is. Because, like, when John Jones versus Daniel Cormier, Daniel Cormier was undefeated, man. Daniel Cormier was romping guys left to right in strike force in UFC when he became a light heavyweight. He versed John Jones the first time. John Jones beat him at his own game. And I think that's what's going to happen with Max Holloway. I don't think he's going to beat him at his own game. But I think he's going to teach this guy, you know what? No. Nah, I'm the champion. And I'm the champion for the re- um, for a reason. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to beat your ass. And I think Max Holloway, you know, what he says comes true. Just like Conor McGregor. Unless it was boxing with Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> or Nate Diaz. Other than that. You know, Max Holloway, he beat my favorite fighter of all, uh, except for Leota Machida, Jose Aldo, the greatest featherweight of all time. Whoopsie. Um, but, um, Jose, he got, he got beaten by Max Holloway twice. And not many people can say they've beaten Jose Aldo. Max Holloway, um, and uh, what's his name? Conor McGregor and a couple of others can say they've beaten Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo held the featherweight title for nine or ten years, and that's crazy. It's unheard of now. Titles go left to right now. Um, so, yeah, I think Max Holloway would defeat Brian T.C.D. Ortega by knockout in the third, fourth round. Now, I want to say this. I want to predict the probably the Best fight coming out of 2018, if it happens, if this fight happens, and that is TJ Dillashaw versus Demetrius Mighty Mount Johnson. I think TJ Dillashaw is going to win. Now, everyone's going to call me crazy. Oh, Demetrius Johnson's the greatest of all time. Yes, but he lost against Dominic Cruz. All right, he lost against Dominic Cruz. Now, TJ Dillashaw did versus Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz did beat TJ Dillashaw, but I think TJ Dillashaw won that fight, but they gave the decision to Dominic Cruz. But that's my opinion. TJ Dillashaw is one of my favorite fighters. If TJ Dillashaw is 100% healthy, I think he would beat Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. But Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, he's defended his title 10, 11 times. He's done a flying arm bar on one of my favorite fighters, Ray Borg. Amazing wrestler, amazing speed, amazing stand-up. Now, TJ Dillashaw, good stand-up, good wrestling, mediocre jiu-jitsu. 
If it goes on the ground, I think Demetrius Johnson is going to beat T.J. Dillashaw. But I don't think it will. I think T.J. Dillashaw is going to just torture him throughout the whole five rounds. And I think T.J. Dillashaw is going to get the decision. So that's my prediction. And I think T.J. Dillashaw's head movement, his footwork, everything is good. Oh, yeah, Cody Garbrandt stunned him. I don't care if Cody Garbrandt stunned him, all right? Or if there was five more seconds, ten more seconds on the round left. You can't say that, man. I could say a lot of things. I could say, oh, what happens if John Jones didn't land that head kick against Daniel Cormier? I can say a lot of things. Unfortunately, it doesn't come true. I don't like I don't like Cody Garbrandt. I think he's a bad fighter. Not a bad fighter. I just don't think he's championship material. Um, TJ Dillashaw proved it when he knocked him out. So I think TJ Dillashaw is going to beat Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. And I think it's going to be by decision. If Demetrius Johnson somehow is going to win, I think it's going to be by a uh, submission in the fourth round. Now, another big fight for the UFC. And that's going to be Daniel Cormier versus Stipe Miocic. Now, I reckon Stipe Miocic is the massive favorite. I'll tell you why. The reason, the reason why I think Stipe Miocic is the big favorite Look what he did to Francis Ngannou. Francis Ngannou was knocking out guys left to right with nukes. He knocked out Alistair over him. I don't care if Alistair over him has a bad chin. He knocked out Curtis Blood. I think Curtis Blood is. Um, Alistair over him. Um, <clears throat> all these guys. Francis Ngannou is, is crazy. But he has no cardio. He has no wrestling. And he has no jiu-jitsu. Stipe Miocic proved it. Stipe Miocic is a... He's an amazing wrestler. Stipe Miocic has knockout power. Stipe Miocic has jiu-jitsu. But there's a difference. This is between a gold medal, or not gold medal, an um, Olympic wrestler and a wrestler. I think Daniel Cormier is just going to romp, absolutely romp Stipe Miocic. Now, John Jones did beat Daniel Cormier at his own game in their first fight. He, he took him down, he, he stuffed him up, he punched him, he did all this stuff. He won by decision. Second fight, John Jones knocked him out, but apparently was tested for testosterone. But I think that was tainted. But there's, you know, right now there's no, there's only one proof that that it was tainted. Um, I think Daniel Cormier is going to demolish Stephen Miocic. I think he's going to just... I think the first round will be Stipe. First and second round will be Stipe. But I think Daniel Cormier is going to get it out there. And I think he's just going to wrestle the hell out of him. I think he's going to maul him. Uh, the AKA where he trains with Habib and Kane Velasquez, formerly Luke Rockhold. That wrestling gym is effing crazy that wrestling gym is absolutely mental i don't know what to say about it but oh man it, it, it's pretty crazy um so i think daniel Cormier wins by decision and if cpp does win it's by knockout in the first second round and i think daniel Cormier is gonna cry after that that would be pretty funny <laughs> so i want to talk about rumored fights as well i think one of the rumored fights um, is going to be Amanda Nunes versus Chris Cyborg after Amanda Nunes defends her title against Raquel, Raquel Pennington in UFC 2, 224 against the Australian. I think Amanda Nunes is just too good for Raquel Pennington. I don't think there's enough um, fighters stacked for that division. When Ronda Rousey had that title, that division was relevant. When Holly Holm had that title, that division was relevant. As soon as it went on to Misha Tate, it went irrelevant. No one cares about the bantamweight division. Everyone's talking about the straw weight with the women's, and everyone's talking about you know, there's not really a featherweight division, but yeah. Um, with Chris Cyborg, straw weight division is much better. But I think Amanda Nunes is going to absolutely def kill, absolutely destroy Raquel Pennington. Um, and I think she's going to knock her out in the second round. Um, and then I think she's going to fight Chris Cyborg. And then she's going to get a taste of her own medicine. I think Chris Cyborg is absolutely going to defeat Amanda Nunes. I think Chris Cyborg is going to knock her out in the third or fourth round. But 
no one can no one can underestimate Amanda Nunes, man. Amanda Nunes is something else. Amanda Nunes, her reach. You look at Ronda Rousey versus Amanda Nunes. Her reach is crazy. You saw those jabs if you watched that fight. I think a lot of people did. Those jabs were absolutely mental. Ronda Rousey has no head movement. Ronda Rousey has no stand up. But Chris Cyborg has stand up. Chris Cyborg has head movement, footwork, and a power punch. I don't think Amanda Nunes is going to go out of the third round, which will be a five round fight, just letting you know for the title. As well, I also want to talk about another rumored fight. Um, what is this? What is another rumored fight? Um, the winner of Khabib and Tony will fight Connor, apparently. Now, I'm going to talk about, let's say one of them wins. So I'm going to talk about Tony Ferguson. Let's say if Tony Ferguson beats Khabib, everyone's going to be like, oh my God, Connor's going to lose because Tony Ferguson but just beat Khabib. I disagree. I think Connor knocks him out in the first round. <laughs> it's plain and simple. He did it to Eddie Alvarez in the second round. He absolutely defied him. I think Al is going to get too cocky with his head moving and then boom, left hook right to the face. I think it's over. Done. I don't even have to say anything. Conor McGregor is something special. Khabib is something special. I'm not a big fan of Conor McGregor anymore, but I'm giving him respect. I'm giving him all my respect. He's one of the greatest fighters of all time. I think it would absolutely romp, romp Tony Ferguson. First round knockout. Now, Khabib versus Conor McGregor is a different story. I think Khabib wins by decision. Absolutely moles him. But I kind of leaning towards Conor a little bit. Not too much. The reason why is Conor McGregor has a left hand. He has stand up and every fight starts standing up. Every round starts standing up. If Connor can get that left hand, it is over. But you saw those kicks. Edson Barbosa kicked Khabib like 50 times in the head and he didn't do anything. Michael Johnson rocked Khabib. But everyone's talking about that one moment. That's when he had a bad weight cut. Let's just say he has good weight cuts for all these fights up until now. I think he's still going to stay undefeated until he versus someone like Darren Till if he ever does, which I doubt it. When he goes up to the Walter Weight division. I think Khabib wins by decision. And I think Khabib wins it in good fashion. And I think Conor McGregor will win the first or second and second round. But after that, he's gone. He's, he's just over. Cardio won't go. Cardio, the lactic acid. Now, <laughs> um, I'm talking about my five favorite fighters. <laughs> um, My five favorite fighters. Now, it's a no-brainer. Conor McGregor is an honorable mention. I love Conor McGregor. I don't love him. I like Conor McGregor, but not. In, I don't. Um, he's not big for me. He's not amazing for me. But I'm always on his side unless it's someone who's up against one of my favorite fighters. Now, number five is Darren Till. This Scouse kid from Blackpool, England. <laughs> I'm joking. From Blackpool, England, I think, and he's just he's, he's, he's special man. When he was a kid or a teenager. He got stabbed, I think, and his coach said, you know what, move to Brazil, and he moved to Brazil, he learned jiu-jitsu, he learned Muay Thai, he learned all this stuff, and ever since then, he's become a beast, 18 and 0 record, he just defeated Donald Cerrone, one of the most, most, probably the most respected fighter in MMA history, everyone loves Donald Cerrone, I don't, I'm not a fan of Cerrone at all, I think he talks too much crap, but that's, that's in my opinion, um... Darren Till absolutely lit him up. Absolutely destroyed Donald Cerrone. Now everyone's saying, oh, Donald Cerrone's crippled. Donald Cerrone's this. Donald Cerrone's that. No, he's not. He just knocked out Yancy Madeira. So I don't know what you're talking about. Darren Till is my fifth. For number four, hmm, this is a hard one, but I'm going to pick T.J. Dillashaw. T.J. Dillashaw, oh, man, what a, what a fighter. What an, what an animal. T.J. Dillashaw is crazy. T.J. Dillashaw's head movement, footwork. Everything about him is absolutely mental. His kicks, his head movement, his combos, his wrestling, his jiu-jitsu is phenomenal. TJ Dillashaw is the second greatest bantamweight of all time, in my opinion. I let, uh, he beat Henan Baral. Henan Baral was, regardless, the greatest fighter of all time up until he lost against TJ Dillashaw. Now, my third favorite fighter is... 
going to be Khabib Namagamedov. Khabib Namagamedov. Actually, no, 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 no. You know what? No, 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 no. My third favorite fighter is going to be Johnny Bones Jones. Johnny Bones Jones is my third favorite fighter. I love John Jones. And the reason why I love John Jones is because it's freaking John Jones, man. Like, what is what else is there to say? He's something special, this guy. John Jones, kicks, elbows, head movement, footwork. I'm going to add another head movement there. John Jones is the best goddamn fighter of all time. I, I'm, I'm saying, is just that it? Jiu-Jitsu. He beat Daniel Cormier in his own game, which is wrestling. Daniel Cormier is an Olympic wrestler. John Jones doesn't even do wrestling, and he beat him at his own game. John Jones was a white belt in Jiu-Jitsu like a year or two years ago. Now it's like a blue belt, and he's still tapping out, guys. You see what he did to Victor Belfort with the Kimura? Absolutely phenomenal. He, to me, is the greatest fighter of all time. Um, I don't think anyone's going to change their mind unless it's George St. Pierre. That is a good argument. George St. Pierre, I think Anderson Silva's gone off the goat rail ever since the drug test. And yeah, John Jones has been in, um, uh, you know, what's it called? Um, uh, in bad, bad, like, situations. Drug test, hit and run. I don't care. Did Anderson Silva ever, unless, uh, ever, you know, defeat guys wiped out his whole division? Yeah, he did wipe out his whole division. Wait, wait, wait. He does have the most title defenses, but his time was up, yeah? John Jones, to me, I know everyone has their time off, but to me, this kid's just something special. I think he would tie undefeated. Well, he has one loss, but that one loss was disqualification. So I think he will... He will retire with one loss. That's in my opinion. The second fighter is Khabib Nurmagomedov. And 25-0. and 0, This this fight is crazy. I've already said he's a Sambo champion. Two-time Sambo champion. He will wrestle the hell out of you. He will mold you. He will kill you. He will do anything in his power to stay in the fight. He's only had ever one struggle in, in, in the octagon. And that is... Against Michael Johnson when he rocked him once. And then Khabib told him why he was punching Michael Johnson. You have to give up. This is my title shot. My title shot. The funniest thing I've ever seen. Well, before he even wins the fight. Second round. After the second round. Goes to Dana White. I want title shot. Title shot. And then Dana White's like, finish your fight, man. What are you doing? He finishes his fight in devastating fashion. Calls Conor McGregor the chicken. Russia, uh, Ireland, 6 million. Russia, 250 million. <laughs> he is my favorite. He was second favorite fighter. There's nothing really to say other than that. Other than he's going to def- he's gonna absolutely mold Tony Ferguson. Number one, I have two guys. Uh, um, I have two guys at number one. And that is Jose Aldo and Leota Machida. I can't take these two apart. As a young kid... I used to love Leona Machida. I think Leona Machida is the greatest karate fighter in the UFC. Other than Stephen Thompson. Because I respect that guy a hell a lot. Still didn't get knocked out by um, Tyrone Woodley. I would still love to see a fight between Darren Till and Stephen Thompson. But Stephen Thompson's, uh, you know, and wants to decline that fight. But that's fine with me. Let's talk about I'm gonna, Leona Machida. His karate style is absolutely phenomenal. His head movement, his full work is, you know... He nearly wiped out his whole division, but Shogun Hua showed him what's up. Shogun Hua beat him. Knocked him out in their second fight. Leona Machida won by a decision in their first fight, but everyone said Shogun Hua won that fight. So I don't know, man. I don't know, but Leona Machida is my fa- my favorite. And Jose Aldo. I think Leona Machida, um, the reason why I love him so much, it's just... His perfection in the octagon. When I was seven, eight years old, I sat down on my couch watching Leona Machida. I'm like, wow, what a fighter. Now, one of my cousins, he loved, he used to love John Jones. When John Jones, before he even won the heavyweight, uh, the heavyweight title, when he beat Shogun Hua. Now, when they had promos of Leona Machida and John Jones, I went absolutely 
nuts. I went crazy. Leona Machida's fighting John Jones. Leona Machida's fighting John Jones. I thought Leona Machida, I thought Leona Machida was going to destroy John Jones. I used to hate John Jones back then. I, I couldn't stand the guy. Ever since he defeated Leona Machida, uh, one or two fights after, I love John Jones. I like, yeah, I can't hate this guy, man. You, you just can't hate him. One of the, the greatest fighter of all time. Now, I want to talk about Jose Aldo. Wait a second. Jose Aldo, um, to me, is the greatest featherweight of all time. I think Jose Aldo... Jose Aldo is amazing. Jiu-Jitsu. Stand up. No one's better than him in leg kicks. I don't care. Sorry, Edson Barbosa. He defeated Frankie Edgar. He's defeated Chad Bendis. He's defeated Ricardo Lamas. He's defeated all these guys. He's defeated Cup Swanson in strike force. He def- he defeated Cup Swanson in like 14 seconds or something. Something crazy like that. Jose Aldo is the greatest featherweight of all time. But, you know... People say it's Max Holloway, you know, be, or Conor McGregor, because Max Holloway defeated him twice. I can fully understand that. That I can't argue against. He defeated him twice. But I think ho- ever since he got knocked out by Conor McGregor, his mentality has gone down. But did you see what he did against Frankie Edgar? After he got knocked out by, um, what's his name? Conor McGregor. He defeated Frankie Edgar in UFC 200. The guy's crazy. If he does get, if he does keep continue fighting, if Brian Ortega does beat, what's his name, Max Holloway, I think, I think Jose Aldo has a good chance. So Jose Aldo is that. That's my favorite fighter, and Leoto the Dragon Machida. Now, um, I got some. I got some. Now. I think I'm going to talk about my favorite fights. I don't have much for this because, you know, you know, I'm going to do top three favorite fights. Now, number three, to me anyways, when I was watching it, it's just a, it's it's John Jones versus Daniel Cormier too. That fight was amazing. I love the fight. And it just brought me back memories to when I was a kid. When I was a little kid, sitting down, watching TV, getting amazed. I was amazed with that fight. I was amazed with both of them. I don't really get amazed that much in UFC anymore because it's just a regular thing to me. I watch it every day, UFC. Every single day. Maybe some days I don't watch it, but mostly every day I watch the UFC. Highlights, something, MMA world, whatever. I talk about it 24-7. Other than WWE. By the way, that podcast will um, will be doing the next episode about fast lane in two weeks. Sorry about it. It's just Lee has been busy, and next week we have to go on an excursion, so we will not be able to post another uh, episode this week and next week. But the next episode will be in two weeks. So as my point, I think that fight had the energy was crazy. The Daniel Cormier was looking good at one point. You really turn the tables against John Jones, but then boom, head kick, fight was over. Daniel Cormier cried like a little baby. Greatest smile of my life. Now, my second favorite fight of all time. Well, <sighs> that's a crazy one. I already know what my first favorite fight of all time is, but I don't know at all what the hell my second favorite fight is. I have no clue. Mm, that's a hard one. That is a very hard one. Very, very, very hard one. Mm, I'm actually going to search up the greatest UFC fights. I'm not going to lie with you guys. You know why? Because my memory is shook right now. Let me see if I've seen any of these fights. Oh, yeah. Honorable mentions with my favorite fighters, by the way. Brock Lesnar, Frank Mir, Conor McGregor, Max Holloway. I love Max Holloway. He's a beast. T City, Brian Ortega, um, Kane Velasquez. He's a beast. Kane Velasquez is a beast. Absolute beast. 
Um, oh, yeah. My second favourite fight. Sorry, turn a couple of my head. I didn't even search it up properly. It's not even loading. Robbie Lola versus Ryan McDonald too. What the heck? How could you not have that on your list? How could you not have that on your list? The most bloodiest fight I've ever seen, but the fight I saw, the number one that I have on my list. Ro- Robbie Lola, what an animal. R- Rory McDonald, what a beast. I think he knocked him out in the fifth or fourth round. Fifth, I think. Robbie Lola. Blood everywhere. First round, just strikes. All technical. And then up until the second or third round, they just went crazy at each other. Started fighting. Started hitting each other. Started kicking to the head. Kicks to the body. Robbie Lola had a massive split lip. Robbie Lola was nearly done. Got rocked by Rory McDonald. Then the fourth round, Rory McDonald rocked him. Then Rory Lola rocked him. And then fifth round, Robbie Lola knocks him out. And not really, not really knocks him out. Take a technical knockout. And wins. What a fight. It was amazing. But you have to watch it. It's really unexplainable. And now the first fight is Alexander Gustafson versus John Jones. Easy. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why that is the best fight, in my opinion. These two were so evenly matched, it was hard there. John Jones won by a split, uh, a split or unanim- I think a unanimous decision. Everyone thought at first glance, when they first saw the fight, Alexander Gustafson got robbed. But then, when people saw the replay, everyone thought, you know what? Yeah, John Jones didn't win that. He landed more significant strikes. Elbows to the head. Um, there was one, he did a spinning back el- fist el- uh, like elbow. And legit dented the whole head of Alexander Gustafson. Alexander Gustafson was gone. Absolutely, like, you know. He didn't get knocked out, though. First round, I think, Alexander Gustafson. Second round, Alexander Gustafson. And then the third round, this is where it started to go. I think the third round was a bit of a draw. John Jones got shots in, got more significant strikes. And the fourth round, John Jones completely destroyed him. Fifth round, I think John Jones won. Elbows to their head, punches to their head, kick, uh, amazing leg kicks by Alexander Gustafson. He, his range is amazing. I think if they had another fight, I think John Jones would destroy him. But um, that's just my opinion. I That is the greatest UFC fight of all time. Now, I'm going to talk about the biggest topic in fighting right now. I don't care about UFC. I do care. I'm joking. But no one, no one is, not many people are talking about the UFC until Conor McGregor comes back. Or Ronda Rousey, which will, she will never. Unless it's one more fight. Mm. Anthony Joshua versus Deontay Wilder. Everyone's talking about this. I don't know why. I don't know why everyone's talking about this. You know why? Because Anthony Joshua could lose his next fight. What happens if he loses his next fight? It'll be Parker versus Deontay Wilder then. But let's say Anthony Joshua knocks this guy, knocks this knocks this New Zealand guy out. My theory is that Deontay Wilder knocks out Anthony Joshua in the ninth round. I think Deontay Wilder is crazy. He has a chin. Anthony Joshua doesn't. Anthony Joshua doesn't know how to use head movement. Deontay Wilder has a freaking nuclear right hand. Absolutely nuclear right hand. Anthony Joshua is more technical, but he has no head movement. Anthony Joshua is more hesitant with his punching. Anthony Joshua has looked more sloppy lately, especially against that. Especially in his last fight, I think Colve. I forgot his name. Cleach. I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big fan of boxing, but I've seen the fights. He beat him, but. It wasn't, it wasn't, oh my god, performance. It was, you know, like his past, past couple of fights, it's not the same Anthony Joshua, in my opinion. And I think Anthony Joshua is just a hype chain, man. I think, in my opinion, Deontay Wilder is a true champ, and I hopefully, I hope he defeats Floyd Mayweather's record. He's 40, you know, Deontay Wilder, and I think Anthony Joshua's 28, you know, something like that. I don't know. I think that's Luis Ortiz's record. I will confirm it right now. Um, by the way, Luis Ortiz was getting ducked by all these heavyweights. Um, Deontay Wilder accepted the fight. Luis Ortiz was kind of winning. And then Deontay, boom, knockout. And that's what I think. I think Luis Ortiz would beat Anthony Joshua. And 
if the Warsaw teams would beat Anthony Joshua, wouldn't you think Deontay Wilder would beat Anthony Joshua? Hmm. I think Deontay Wilder is the best boxer right now. I don't think Anthony Joshua deserves even th- his clout. Like, I don't know why he's so popular, man. I don't. I have no clue. Is he LeBron James or boxing? The Michael Jordan or boxing, everyone's saying. Like, at this moment. Anthony Joshua's record is... See, he has t- he's twenty and zero. Deontay Wilder has had more fights than him. He's had twenty more fights than Anthony Joshua. You gotta let that sink in for a little bit. Let that sink in. Now, how old is Anthony Joshua? Anthony Joshua was twenty eight. All right. I think Deontay Wilder is. I'm gonna confirm it, but I think Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder, I think he's 31. But I'm going to confirm it. So 28 to what? Let's see. Let's see. 32. He's 32 years old. That's a four-year age gap. Not that big. Trust me when I say this. You need cardio in boxing. You need a chin in boxing. Deontay Wilder has that. The bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder, as they say in America. Deontay Wilder... Is something special, man. I think he is the LeBron James of boxing. I think he deserves more clout. He deserves more money. He deserves everything more. Four do you know? Let that sink in. Name a last heavyweight guy who has that. Other than Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, and Kilochich, or whatever his name is. Let that sink in. Hmm. Mike Tyson. I don't know, I don't know who, man, like, back then, yeah, Muhammad Ali, Joe Fraser, you know, all those guys, but, George, George Foreman, but you gotta think about it, Deontay Wilder is the new era, everyone's saying it's Anthony Joshua, I think Anthony Joshua's gonna get derailed, and I hope he gets derailed, Anthony Joshua's 28 years old, Anthony Joshua is, you know, has no head movement, man. I just, I don't see it. I don't see him beating Deontay Wilder. Now, let me tell you why I think Deontay Wilder is going to win. Right hand, left hand, better footwork, can, can has better head movement, but I don't think he's technically better. I think technically better it is Anthony Joshua. Now, if Anthony Joshua does beat him, it's by decision. I don't think he's going to knock out the bronze bomber. You saw what Lewis Ortiz did to him. He still didn't get knocked out. He smiled after the round. Deontay Wilder. Deontay Wilder's the real deal, man. And I don't know what to say, man. I have no clue what to say. Um, The bronze bomber, man. He's going to knock him out. Deontay Wilder is absolutely going to destroy him, in my opinion, if they fight. That's even if Anthony Joshua beats Parker, man. If Anthony Joshua beats Parker, okay, whatever, man. 21-0. Wow, what a great record. No, it's not. Yeah, he's O. I I don't care, man. You need experience in this game. You need experience in this game. Trust me when I tell you. You need experience in this game, bro. You need experience. Um, Deontay Wilder's going to knock him out. Ninth round. That's my prediction. If it does happen, I don't know. Now... Let me speak about another thing. I'm going to speak about this situation with Conor McGregor. Who should he fight? When should he fight? Conor McGregor should fight after the lightweight title. And Conor McGregor, I hope he fights Max Holloway. That's the fight I want to see. I want to see Max Holloway versus Conor McGregor because that, whoa, bro, that fight would be crazy. That fight would be absolutely mental, bro. Um... And Conor McGregor's stand-up, Max Holloway's stand-up is crazy. I don't see, um, I don't see Max Holloway winning. I want Max Holloway to win, but I don't see him winning. I don't see, um, Conor McGregor destroying him like he did last time when they both had injuries. They both had injuries during that fight, but I think Max Holloway... His head movement, his jabs and everything. I don't think it will work against Connor, man. Connor's Connor's just 
just times one better than him. Conor McGregor's head movement. <laughs> maybe he doesn't have good wrestling. Maybe he doesn't have good jiu-jitsu. But his takedown defense is good. Conor McGregor. Head movement. Left hand. Right hand even. Jab. Southpaw. Everything, man. Everything's... Uh, Conor McGregor, man. When he comes back, I think he's going to prove something to the world that... Even if I take a break, you can doubt me all you want. I'm going to knock out anyone who stands in front of me. And the only guy I think he's not going to knock out is Khabib Nurmagomedov. Now, guys, sorry if this podcast was really short. But, you know, I didn't have a lot of planning for this podcast, unfortunately. Um, this is my, like, you know... First episode of the MMA podcast. I don't think I'm going to be continuing this. But in the comments down below, if you want me to continue this, let me know. Um, and yeah, I'll definitely plan it much better. Now, um, thank you guys. And also, um, then I'm just going to let you know again. Two weeks is the next WWE podcast. Comments down below if you want to see... Another MMA podcast, and I might disband from the WWE. We'll see. I might do an MMA podcast um, on the same day. So let me know if you want to see another MMA podcast. Definitely, they'll be longer. They'll have more news, more rumors, and um, more things to talk about. And see you guys. Just too sweet. Y'all ready for this?